Today I've got here a Samsung QLED TV that we're going to tear apart. Let's get into it. All right, it took three people, a lens, a mini spectrometer, a pen cap, and a blue LED to make this measurement, which you're going to see in a little bit after we get into this Samsung Q7 TV. This is an LCD TV. It's a QLED model, 75-inch model, so it's pretty big. As you'll see, it takes up a good bit of my office here. I start by taking some screws out of the bottom and then quickly get on to trying to pry off the side of the uh, back panel. Unlike some of the other TVs I've taken apart, uh, there's not many screws, actually any screws, on the back of this TV. It's, they're only on the bottom. On the back, it's simply some clips, some plastic clips uh, that are pressure fit into uh, kind of a metal wire, which you'll see here in a minute. And it really had to pry with a, a little paint scraper to get those things to pop off. Finally was successful in doing so and got the back of the TV popped all the way off to expose the electronics on the back. I'll give you a close-up of the clips here in case anybody needs to try to do this themselves. You can see what you'll be working with. So here you can see the plastic clips, molded plastic clips on the back panel. Um, and those were hooked onto these kind of metal, this metal wire running down the, the side of the TV. So after finally getting that off, it exposes all of the electronics here and the speaker and the Wi-Fi card and power and everything. Uh, I got rid of the speaker. I don't need that for what I'm going to do here and played around with trying to get this TV to turn on properly. Uh, unplug the Wi-Fi card in case that was interfering. But as you can see, this TV actually just blinks when I turn it on. It did have some damage when I got it um, and I was not able to get it operating at this point. So here you can see the power supply. Uh, it didn't look like there was anything fried on the power supply or anything like that, but you can see it just kind of blinks on and off when I try to power it on. So before going too much further, I wanted to get some measurements in the back of the TV. So I've got my friend Dave here helping me today. And with my Avante's mini spectrometer, I'm measuring the light that's blinking through some holes in the back of the TV. I assume these holes are there simply for airflow reasons. Um, and then I decided I would discharge these capacitors on the power supply. Don't try this at home. Um, I was a little surprised at how much uh, spark I got out of these. Um, but, you know, in, I decided to do this just to kind of be able to work more safely around them. But in the end, it actually kind of made the TV come back to life. Um, I don't know how, but this kind of reset something in the power supply or the electronics and the TV now runs. So it turns on, it stays on. As you can see, the damaged LCD here is a bunch of cracks and lines going across it. So we're not gonna be able to display an image, but at least we can get the backlight to turn on now. So that was a pleasant but unexpected surprise. We've got a few more components to take off of the bottom here. As you'll notice with a lot of these TVs that I've taken apart, the place where the electronics feed the signal into the LCD comes down around the bottom and these ribbon cables, they're those kind of gold looking cables that you can see there and there's some long skinny PCBs that go with it. But before we get to that, before we can take off this back panel, we've got to get this side bezel off. And uh, this proved to be a little bit tricky. There's a good bit of adhesive here. It's holding that bezel between the backlight unit and the, uh, the, metal, the metal back here with all the electronics on it. So we prop this up with some wooden boards to get a little better access to it. Uh, I'm not too worried about the LCD since it's already cracked, so I'm just putting it right on these wooden boards. But even if it was good, I think they, this would be okay. <clears throat> Ultimately, we decided to flip this thing over to get uh, a better grip on these and, and to be able to then move on to the next part, uh, which is getting the LCD off once we were successful. So thanks to some of the comments of viewers, we got a heat gun, brought a heat gun in for this one. So thanks Dave for bringing your heat gun to the table today. And that actually helped a lot with softening this adhesive and I was able to run this paint scraper along the length um, this is actually sped up. I'm going really, really slow going along the perimeter of the TV here to separate that adhesive. And it pops that LCD right off once we get that in there. 
So go along the rest of the perimeter of the TV and, and loosen up the adhesive, and then we're able to get that LCD separated from the backlight. There's no adhesive on the bottom between the ribbon cables, just around the other three edges. So Steve is unhooking the ribbon cables here, and you can see the, the green PCBs that go with it. This is all driving the LCD. And finally, we're able to lift up the LCD and separate it completely from the back of the TV, where all the light's being generated. So there goes our LCD. One of these days, I'd like to do a nice video of the LCD operating in real time, separated from the TV, but uh, that wasn't going to happen with this one. So we plug this thing back in, and yep, we get the backlight operating all by itself. But before we go too far, we've got one more component to remove, and that's this frame that's holding on some of the films in place. Um, at first, I thought we had to wrench this thing off, but actually, it turns out we can just kind of twist it and it pops right off of some of the holders. So that's what I did with the rest of the edges. That pops right off. We get that bent and out of the way because we don't need that anymore. And then finally we've got the optical films now loose. There's some tabs on the top that have to be just kind of released easily and then, and then we can get into these optical films. So if you've watched my other videos, you know I like to take lots of optical data as I take these things apart. So what I'm doing here is the TV is operating, the, LC, the, the LEDs are on, and I'm measuring the optical spectrum as I take films off. So this is a full film stack here. There's a QD film, there's two enhancement films, there's a diffuser, and then there's the LEDs on the back. So we're going to take these off one by one so you can see what each component is. There's the first brightness enhancing film. And these, these two brightness enhancing films, they can be called BEFs or DBEFs. Uh, they serve to kind of channel the light into the right direction towards the viewer and, and also help polarize the light. And if it's not in the right direction or polarized, then it kind of recycles that light, that, that light back to the back of the TV for another chance at coming forward. So it's a way to enhance the light output of the TV and the efficiency and brightness of the TV. There's the QD film. This, again, is a QLED TV from Samsung. So this QD film, I expect, is going to have indium phosphide quantum dots in it. And then finally, the diffuser on the back here, and then we have the LEDs. And man, these things are bright. You can see we try to wear some sunglasses here, um, and that helps a little bit with some of this light, but you know we still want to look at it. So be careful, though, if you're doing this at home. Um, it definitely is very bright. So here's the QD film. It is, in fact, I believe, indium phosphide quantum dots, as expected, based on the peak width. You can see the red and the green. Uh, peak width there. We measured this by exciting it with a UV source. And then here's the array of LEDs on the back of the TV. You can see the white reflector behind the LEDs. There's 392 LEDs in this behemoth 75 inch TV. You couldn't see it in the photos that well, but you can see it in the video here um, that these LEDs actually are not only blue, they kind of have a bit of a white hint to it. Um, so here's a close-up of the lens, and you can kind of see some yellow there, which I'm going to get into in a minute here. Use my trusty paint scraper to pop off a couple of these lenses, and we can look at the individual LED. And it turns out, yes, this LED looks like it has some phosphor on it. So they are not just blue LEDs. They are phosphor-converted LEDs. And also looks like there's some phosphor stripes around the LED. And if you've seen my earlier videos, uh, you might expect what this is. So we take a super scientific approach to trying to analyze each of these independently. Take a Sharpie and mark off the phosphor lines around the LED and then also mark off the LED itself so it puts out less light. Here's a close-up of that LED with the phosphor lines around it excluded. Now if we measure this with just the diffuser film on, no QD, so the light is only coming from the LEDs and the phosphor, you can see there's red and green in that spectrum. So we expect there's a red and green phosphor on the LED. And then here we measure the phosphor around the LED. And similar to the one before that I've measured, this is a YAG phosphor, yttrium aluminum carbonate, a common phosphor used in the lighting and display industry. It's very cheap, but it's not very good for color gamut. 
Here's a close-up of the four LEDs that I modified. Um, did end up putting the lenses on back, back on a few of these, but was able to make some interesting measurements of uh, the light coming out right above these LEDs with the lens, without the lens. So I believe what's happening here is we have a YAG phosphor printed around the LED and a blue LED with red and green phosphor. Um, and then, of course, we have the quantum dot film as well. So what we're looking at now is combined data showing the, the diffuser only data. That's only the LED and the diffuser. And it's kind of a little bit broader. That's in orange. And then the full film stack, which is in black, that's before the LCD. So that includes the quantum dot color conversion. You can see it's a little narrower. And then if we compare that to just the QD film alone in blue, you can see it's a little bit narrower than that even. So the contribution of the full film stack in black is kind of a combination of the two other spectrum here. So thank you so much for watching, and I hope you check out my other videos on other TV teardowns. I appreciate the help from Dave and Steve today. So please subscribe if you want to see more of these. Thanks.